How's it going, folks? CR here. I'll be responding to Chick making again. Um, <coughs> um, shoot. So, I haven't been ignoring you. Uh, I've been real busy, as you can tell. And I also realized from the pace, Ben, you did say that you couldn't respond to everything. So, I'm going to try to keep this video short, sweet, and simple, man. Uh, let's start off with the YouTube comment, uh, Mexican is a nationality. You're absolutely right, Mexican is a nationality. Um, if they're a U.S. citizen, uh, they're a U.S. citizen. Um, yeah, one of the hiring requirements for the Border Patrol is to be a U.S. citizen. Therefore, they are a U.S. citizen if they're working for the Border Patrol. I don't know how else I can tell you this. Um, the law is pretty clear. First off, you know, U.S. citizens have U.S. citizen rights regardless of race. Second, uh, uh, when it comes to hiring, the federal government cannot discriminate against you based on race. If you are a U.S. citizen, you are a U.S. citizen. End of story. Um... Furthermore, I mean, I could delve a little bit deeper into this and say, hey, um, look, you don't get your citizenship bestow uh, bestowed on you as soon as you move to the U.S. It takes time. You have to be a resident for a certain period of time before you can even apply uh, for your citizenship. My uh, brother's wife is about ready to apply for her citizenship and she has been here for quite some time. So no, it's not like uh, Mexicans just cross the border and get handed their citizenship papers like that. Furthermore, we have a bunch of people who are in this country who were Hispanic who were American through and through. They were born in this country, their parents were born in this country, uh, so on and so forth. Uh, they're U.S. citizens just the same. Um, and the thing is, is when you look at a Border Patrol agent and that Border Patrol agent is Hispanic, you can't tell if he uh, moved here, you know, when he was a child and got his citizenship legally or if said Border Patrol agent is a Hispanic who lived in this country, uh, you know, and previous generations of his family have lived in this country and have been U.S. citizens as well. So, there you have it. Um, with that being said, dude, on this whole immigration thing, here's the thing. It's understandable, very understandable, in fact, uh, you know, that we deal with our illegal immigrants. Yes, uh, most people within their right minds would agree on that one. <coughs> our immigration laws, um, if you think they need to be changed, I mean, you need to actually look at what they are and decide where you need to make the changes. You know, that would be an arguable position. Sitting there saying that, you know, we should just outright ban immigration. Well, you're going to have a hard time with that. Uh, furthermore, you lose your credence when you start focusing on race. Again, as I said before in this video, you have Hispanics who have been here for quite some time. Uh, you know, you've had Hispanics who have lived, their family has lived in Texas, their ancestors have lived in Texas since before Texas declared its independence from Mexico. And believe it or not, a lot of those Hispanics fought for Texas independence. Now, furthermore, you've gone on to say you don't consider black Americans Americans. Well, what do you consider them then? They're not Africans, obviously. I mean, they've been in this country for generations. Uh, their ancestors have been in this country, uh, you know, many of them, before this country declared its independence from the UK. 
how are they not Americans? So you see what issues you're causing with that, too. And do you not understand that you are destroying your own credence with that? You see where I'm coming from on this one. Next. <coughs> he said that <coughs> pace bin that I have to choose between being against identity politics and being against censorship. No, it doesn't work that way. You see, I'm against identity politics. Uh, you know, I think the whole race realism thing you guys have is completely stupid. And I think the uh, whole systematic uh, racism narrative the SJWs put out is pretty stupid. But, you know, I, I believe y'all both should be able to spout that nonsense off and not be censored in doing it. You, you see how that works. But I love that pace been there because you brought up the Proud Boys. Uh, you understand that they're a multiracial group and uh, they've been getting smeared as white supremacists. So your solution <laughs> is to be the white supremacists that the Proud Boys are getting smeared as? Yeah, well, what do you tell all the Proud Boys who are not white then at that point? Oh, sorry guys, but the media is calling us white supremacists, so we're going to have to throw a little bit of white power on our ethos. You see how ridiculous that sounds, dude? Seriously. I mean, your narrative is almost identical to the SJW narrative. Uh, just that you want a white ethno state, it sounds like, and uh, they seem to not like white people. They're into identity politics against white people. You see where this is going. You know, you understand that there are other options than to be an ethno-nationalist or an SJW. I hope you understand that. And if not, I mean, dude, your side is not really popular. I mean, the SJW side, they're not really big either, but, you know, the difference between you and them is they actually do have influence. And the difficulty your side of the aisle is going to face dealing with these people is you're the very bad guy they make you out to be. You see where this is going. You're not going to win that way. So... On to groups like the ADL. Yes, I'm very well aware that the ADL makes its money uh, defaming other people. I mean, yes, they should be called the Defamation League and not the Anti-Defamation League. But it's funny how a lot of groups that put anti in front of their name or in front of whatever thing they're against tend to be the very thing they're against. Go figure. I'm very well aware that our Constitution is being eroded. I'm very well aware that it's being ignored by our politicians and lawmakers. The thing is, is that nobody uh, is putting enough fight into it to actually <laughs> make sure our Constitution is respected. Well, not enough people anyway. You know, I agree with you. You got a large percent of the population that's just outright complacent. You got guys like me who want to see our republic go back to being a republic, you know, a rule of law. And then you've got people that don't really give a shit what the Constitution says and they just want whatever they want at the time or whatever they think they want or whatever the TV tells them that they want. <laughs> Yeah, so I'm very well aware we are losing our republic, and it's a sad thing. You know? If you're concerned about a republic, uh, maybe instead of being an ethno-nationalist, you should just drop that and, and stand up for our republic, our rule of law, our constitution. 
Well, anyway, um, there you have it. Guys, go ahead, leave comments. You know, thank you all for watching. I'll take her easy out there and have a great day.